Hi everybody, Jeremy here, and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use ShapesXR's new animation system. Animations allow you to quickly and easily create animated transitions between your frames and can really help take your prototyping to the next level. So just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Despite some impressive changes, rest assured that all your old projects will open up just fine in Shapes XR. And the Shapes XR UI remains the same with just a few changes that I want to point out to you right now. Most importantly, scenes are now called frames. But don't worry, frames and scenes work pretty much the same way. So the scenes in your previous projects will now open up as frames in the new version of Shapes. And just like the old system, you can find your frames in the Spaces menu on your non-dominant hand. So how does animation work? It's very simple. In fact, Shapes really does all the work for you. Animation is now the default transition between your frames. So let's just do a quick practice test here so you can see how the system works. So let's start by bringing in a basic shape into our project. I'm gonna press the pencil ruler button on my dominant hand and choose the shapes menu. And from this menu, let's bring in this cube right here. And for folks using shapes for the first time to bring a shape directly into my project, I point at the shape I want and I use my grip button. That's my middle finger button located on the handle of my controller. I'm gonna grab the object off the menu and bring it into my space. Your grip button is always the button you use to grab things and pick things up with. So let's place this cube right here. It doesn't really matter where we put it. And let's give it a different color. From my pencil ruler button, I'm going to select the paint tool, choose my color, point at the shape and pull my trigger button. All right, now that I've added an object to my scene, let's access our frames. From my non-dominant hand menu, I'm going to choose this icon right here, the space menu, and then make sure I'm in the frames tab up at the top. And here's where I'm going to find all of my frames. Uh, so let's add a new frame by pressing the plus button right here. Now, if you're unfamiliar with frames, think of them sort of like slides in a PowerPoint presentation. Each frame is a snapshot of my prototype in a different state. And then I can toggle back and forth between my frames and tell a story. You can toggle between your frames by clicking on them here in the menu or by moving your non-dominant hand thumbstick to the left or right. And you can see there's a mini frame display right here. Now, on a side note, this is another important change from the old version of Shapes. This plus button now automatically duplicates the previous frame. So if you want to add a new blank frame, you'll press this button right here. But for now, a duplicated frame, that's what we want. So I've got frames one and two, as you can see here, and they're both identical. So let's go over to frame two and make a change to this cube. And you can do whatever you want, just make sure that you make at least one change to the cube. For my cube, I'm going to change the size and its location in the room. And let's adjust the geometry just a little bit. And then let's recolor it as well. And once you've made at least one change to your object on scene two, you're ready to go. And now you can see as we transition back and forth between the two scenes, the magic happens instantaneously. Animation really is that simple in shapes. But let's build out something just a bit more practical and dive deeper into some of these controls. To make things easier, I've created this space for you along with a few pre-made objects. But before we begin, let's start with a clean slate. Let's go back to our space menu, select frame two, and let's delete it by pressing the trash bin icon right here. Now we're on frame one, so let's delete our cube. To throw it away, just pick it up with your grip button and toss it in the air. All right, to get started, let's move over here to the side of the room. Now, if you're new to shapes, you can move around the room by using your grip buttons. You can pull yourself through the room, you can hold down on both buttons and rotate yourself, or you can scale yourself up and down in the environment. And once you've moved off to the side, look to the back of the room and you should see a viewpoint like this one right here. Now, if you don't see it, that just means your viewpoints are turned off. To turn your viewpoints on, Go to your settings menu. Once again, make sure you're in the settings tab up at the top. Find the viewpoints listing. Open that drop down menu and make sure show viewpoints in space is turned on. Next, let's move our viewpoint from this red circle in the back of the room to the blue circle in front of the control panel. Use your grip button, grab the viewpoint by the head and move it to the front of the room like this. This is where I want users to be when they actually play the prototype. 
Okay, now that we have our viewpoint set up, we're ready to begin prototyping. So let's start by duplicating our frame just like we did before. So choose the space icon, make sure you're in that frames tab. Once here, press the plus button to duplicate the frame. All right, on frame two, make your way over to the control panel and pick up this blue panel here and let's make it bigger. To scale your object up, just move your thumbstick to the right or left, and let's make it about this size and put it right here in front of the control panel. And now when I transition between my scenes, the animation happens automatically, but this transition is a little too fast for me, so let's slow it down. To adjust the timing of a transition, click right here in between the two frames. This opens up your transitions menu, and from here, you've got all sorts of controls. So you can choose the timing of the transition, the type of transition, and whether your chosen transition affects the beginning of the animation, the end, or both. So let's keep everything the same, but let's change the timing. So to change the timing, just click on this number right here, and from the keypad, let's set the transition to one second, and let's give that a try. All right, that feels pretty good. So let's add some new elements to these frames that we've already created. So make sure you're on frame two, and let's add some panels to the side of our floating screen here. Start by accessing your shapes menu from your dominant hand. Now the new object I create, I want it to have the exact same colors and transparencies as this screen here. So from your menu, choose this little eyedropper icon right here, and then click on your main screen. And that's just going to save all of this color and transparency information and apply it to any new objects that we create. Now choose this shape right here from your menu by clicking on it with your trigger button. And once you've selected it, hold down on your trigger button and you can draw out a side panel like this. Now for this exercise, we're not gonna worry about making it perfect, just an approximation is fine. So once you've created your panel, go ahead and pick it up with your grip button. And while holding it, give your trigger button a click and that will duplicate the object. And now grab each object and position them next to your screens. Now, since we only have these panels on frame two, when we transition between our frames, you can see they just fade in and out from view. And that actually looks pretty nice, but I wanna add a little bit of movement to these side panels. So from frame two, go to select mode, hold down on your trigger button and touch both of these side panels to select them. Once selected, release your trigger button and then copy them from your menu by pressing this icon right here. All right, so let's go back to frame one, but this time, instead of going into the menu, I'm just going to tap my non-dominant hand thumbstick to the left, and then click the paste icon right here and choose paste new object. So now I've got duplicates of both of these objects on both frames. Now from frame one, go ahead and select both frames again, pick them up with your grip button, and by using your thumbstick, scale them way down and place them deeper into the room, kind of like this. All right, let's see how that looks. Very, very nice. Okay, we're almost there. So clearly I don't want users to see these tiny panels floating in front of them when they first come into the room. So let's select them again. And then from our inspector menu on our left hand, let's set the visibility to zero. And now we have a smooth animation transition with a nice fade in as well. Okay, to finish off this prototype, let's add some interactions to the scene. From frame one, I'm gonna add an interaction to this panel right here. And what I want to happen is I want users to point at this panel, click on it, and that's what's going to trigger the animation. So let's open the prototyping menu, which is this icon right here, choose add interaction. And for this interaction, we're gonna choose on click. And when users click on the object, we want them to go to the next frame. So choose frame. And everything here should be set up correctly. So when users press the trigger button, they enter frame two. And now we just have to assign this interaction to the screen. So I do that by clicking here and then pointing my controller at the object in my scene. And I press the trigger button to assign it. And when I'm done, I just click this check mark button up here in the top right hand corner. And then to play the prototype, I just press in on my non-dominant hand thumbstick like a button, and that teleports me to that preset viewpoint that we set up earlier in the scene. And when I click on the panel, 
the animation happens. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me to learn about our new animation system. Take some time, play around, familiarize yourself with all the different types of transitions and different options. Take your prototypes to the next level. And as always, we look forward to seeing what you create. Bye, everybody.